Hey, hey, party people. It is time for a new roundup of fashion movies. Yes, I had so much fun watching these. If you watch my first roundup, which I'll link below, you know I split these into three categories. One, fashion documentaries and nonfiction. Two, movies where some aspect of the fashion industry and clothes making is part of the plot. And then three, movies where it has nothing to do with the fashion industry. It just has some really beautiful clothes. Okay. So first category, fashion documentaries and nonfiction. The first one I watched was Dries. And this is a documentary on Dries Van Noten that's on Netflix right now. Here's my review. I love Dries. The end. I'm kidding. Okay. You know, sometimes I look at clothes and I think this designer hates women. Dries Van Noten dresses women like he loves them and wouldn't dream of humiliating them or restricting their movement or their womanness. And I think he dresses men like he loves men too and wants them to experience the joy of fashion as much as women are allowed to. This documentary follows him as he works on a menswear collection and then a women's wear collection and also interviews him about important past collections. And I'm not going to lie, I did do a bit of triumphant shrieking when he said on camera, I start with fabric. Husband actually turned to me and was all having fun. <laughs> and I was all, excuse me while I have a smug moment. But seriously, have you ever seen a jacket hang just so and the sleeve hangs with the perfect drape in the perfect print and you fall in love with fashion all over again? Yeah. Moral of the story, be like Dries, start with fabric. Next up is a little documentary called Secrets of Selfridges, which is also on Netflix. It's short, it's about an hour long, and it's the story of Harry Gordon Selfridge. He's an American who traveled to London, and he uses his very bold, brash Americanness to turn retail on its head on the London High Street. And many of the changes he made to the retail scene are considered retail standards to this day. Cosmetics on the ground floor, he did that. Women's bathrooms made available inside the store, he did that. Yeah, women used to have to go home if they were shopping and needed to go. Okay? Customer service, even for browsers, he did that. Yeah, people used to not be able to wander and look at stuff. He turned shopping into an experience and a joy and not just an errand. Department store workers used to live in the building in very poor, dirty conditions, and he raised their salaries and had them live at home. It's about an hour long. It's a very interesting accounting of his work and his life, including the end of his career. Moral of the story? Take smart risks in business, but don't gamble your profits away. Sneakerheads is also a documentary available on Netflix right now. And this is uh, about people obsessed with sneakers and the history of sneakers and its role in pop culture, music, fashion, sports, kind of all coming together, featuring a lot of beautiful sneaker eye candy, how the sneaker industry has evolved, especially with the advent of the internet, and how sneakers have moved into high fashion. Let me tell you, this world is nuts. Sneaker world? Sneaker world is nuts. Someone in the documentary said that a sneakerhead is someone with OCD, obsessive consumption disorder, and I think he nailed it. This documentary goes into the violence, the riots and fights and full-on murders committed over sneakers, and what is and isn't the responsibility of sneaker companies. But then again, the documentary also talks about child cancer patients designing and selling limited edition sneakers to raise money for other patients. So it goes over a lot. It's super fascinating. And uh, the moral of the story is, don't come at me about luxury markups until you've looked into sneaker resale markups. <sighs> That's the sound of my head exploding. Next is Mary Porta's Secret Shopper, also on Netflix. Mary Porta uh, visits businesses to help them improve. Basically, she sends secret shoppers in advance to get a real feel for how the business interacts with customers. And in this series, she visits two clothing retail shops and one 
Beauty Salon. That's the one that's available on US Netflix. But I did look online and notice that there are several seasons uh, other than the one that's on Netflix. So maybe you'll have access to them in different countries. So just one little side note, is transvestite an okay word to use in the UK? Because this word is not a great word to use in the US. So but I'm not gonna try to like talk for what's appropriate in the UK. Okay, this word. Um, yeah, other than this odd thing that stuck in my brain, this is a very informative s- series. And uh, I wish I had access to more episodes. This series is full of good information on selling clothes and retaining customers. And I also love the way she tries to incorporate technology to improve the retail experience for both the buyer and the seller. And uh, it's a reality show format. So, of course, they do concentrate on kind of the dramatic, tear jerking moments. But there is still plenty of good information. And you can tell her intentions are good. Okay. Moral of the story, as Mary Porta says, business isn't organic anymore. It's proactive. Next, we're going to go into fictional movies about fashion. Okay. First up is Gia, and you can watch this on YouTube, Amazon, all over. Just Google it. And the costumes are by Robert Turturis. This Gia is a heartbreaking but beautiful film about real-life model Gia Carangi, who absolutely captivated fashion, experienced tragedy, fell into drug addiction, got infected with HIV through a dirty needle, and passed too young. Her career was very short, mostly working in the late 70s. And, you know, people were so enamored with her look that when Cindy Crawford first came on the scene modeling in the mid 80s, they called her baby Gia. And I do think that is part of how she got to be so popular, you know, from the get. And uh, I'm old enough to remember when Angelina Jolie was a gifted actress making great movies all the time. And when Gia came out, a lot of people were trying to draw a lot of parallels between Angelina Jolie and Gia because back then in the late 90s, Jolie's reputation had that live fast, possibly die hard vibe. And uh, anyway, great movie with some awesome fashion montages. Moral of the story, take care of your hearts, kids. Next is The Dressmaker, which is also available on Amazon Prime and YouTube. And the costumes are by Marion Boyce. And the costumes for Kate Winslet, the main character, are by Margot Wilson. In this exciting installment of Which Hemsworth is the Hottest, I watched my wildest fantasy unfold before my very eyes. A woman in the movie approaches the main character, Kate Winslet, for a custom dress saying, I want this one, pointing to a photograph. And Kate Winslet just says, you'll get what I give you. (laughs) I've always wanted to say that to a client. (laughs) The story goes, Kate Winslet grows up in a small town, runs away to Europe, becomes a dressmaker, returns to her small town to take care of her ailing mother, and supposedly seek revenge on some really messed up townspeople who accused her of murder. Or possibly just find out the truth of what really happened that one day. This movie is so hilarious, yet deeply dark with some truly terrible, terrible people. And uh, it's a ride. It's filled with insanely gorgeous gowns. Uh, The movie involves clothes and clothes making, the transformative power of clothes, you know, as important features in the plot. Kate Winslet, the main character, you know, in the movie, she's constantly making beautiful gowns for the townspeople. And that kind of plays a role in her relationship with the town, her new relationship. Anyway, the only beef I have with the movie... And with basically every movie where there's like custom clothes making involved is the overnight turnaround on some of these gowns. Custom perfect fit and all that beating that fast? No, I don't think so. And this is why people expect so much from real life custom dressmakers because they see these movies and they're like, well, you know, fake Kate Winslet's character in that one movie did. No, no. <laughs> Anyway, moral of the story, the hottest Hemsworth is the mom. 
Last section, movies with rad clothes. First up, 101 Dalmatians. It's on Netflix. Costumes are by Rosemary Burroughs and Anthony Powell. And in the comments section of my first fashion movie review video, a ton of people told me I had to watch this movie, and they were right. This is not... I mean, it's 101 Dalmatians, okay? It's not based on reality. This is not a beautifully subtle, clever movie. This is over-the-top characterizations and ridiculous over-the-top acting. And Glenn Close's costumes are like the best kind of ridiculous, you know? Just super high drama. You know, enjoy if you want a little ridiculous fun with adorable dogs. And that scene where Lucky is born, oh, I totally awed out loud okay and i heard 102 dalmatians the sequel have just as amazing costumes moral of the story don't kill puppies studio 54 is a documentary on netflix and i didn't put this in the other documentary section because it's not necessarily about fashion okay you know, I have this conversation a lot with students about adding photos of people to sketchbook development and mood boards. And there's a big difference between having photos of your muse, of photos that express an attitude, and photos that show clothes you're going to copy in your designs. And this documentary is about the famous nightclub of the late 70s, the original. And uh, the documentary interviews Ian Schrager, one of the owners, and people who worked at Studio 54 and people who are regulars about the rise and fall, the end, the prison time, and the aftermath. This isn't a fashion movie like the trends of the 70s were these fabrics and these shapes, but it's about disco and why disco was so great beyond the sound and attitude and spirit and freedom. Okay, You know, you watch this movie to understand the slice of time and place and get inspired by just the spirit of it all. Moral of the story, keep your nose clean, literally and figuratively. Next movie is Tom of Finland. It's on Amazon, and the costumes are by Anna Vilpunen. This is a biopic, so it's based on a true story, but not a documentary, about gay erotica illustrator Toko Laksonen, commonly known as Tom of Finland. And this is the only image that is uh, rated G for my audience that I could find of his work. So if you decide to Google him, just be prepared. It's all, it's all adult content, okay? And uh, this movie spans his adult life from his time as a decorated officer in World War II, adjusting to civilian post-war life and uh, working for an ad agency, his struggles of being a gay man in a time and place when it was illegal. And, you know, if you were arrested back then and there, you were sent off to conversion therapy after the cops beat the crap out of you. And... Um, yeah, and then the story goes into how he slowly started sharing his illustrations. He had to do it very secretly, you know, because it was very, very, very illegal. And, uh, yeah, you know, and how he became known in America and how he became an icon of gay culture. And on the surface, it's a beautiful film with beautiful sets, and you can see the passage of time in the great menswear and facial hair preferences. <laughs> Uh, I will say I wish the leather looked a little bit more genuine. A lot of the leather looked a little too fresh off the rack. Mm. Illustration geeks will probably understand the drawing process scenes are a bit odd. Okay. You watch, you tell me. Okay. I would actually love to know more about Tom of Finland's actual drawing technique. Under the surface of the film, it's a heart-wrenching and bittersweet. I mean... <sighs> No one can ever mention the first onslaught of the AIDS crisis in the 80s without me tearing up. But ultimately, it's a still hopeful movie about a slice of gay culture. Moral of the story, where there's a will, there's a way. Pursue with passion and hide your passport from any potential one night stands. Next movie, Atomic Blonde. I saw this in the theater, uh, but it's everywhere. YouTube, Amazon, Google Play, you know. Costumes are by Cindy Evans. Listen, if you don't know by now how much I love spy movies, you have not been paying attention. The whole movie is amazing to look at. Charlize Theron's character style is just too good. Actually, she pay, like she plays like 
a few different roles in the movie. Remember, spy, okay? And each wardrobe for each persona really suits. It really works, okay? And uh, James McAvoy and Sophia Butella also have incredible wardrobes in their own unique styles. The whole look is Cold War East Berlin, which is the setting, but the look of it is made more modern. And you know, that's kind of movie, some people prefer it like super authentic and dated looking, and some people prefer just it looking more modern and more, you know, currently appealing. And I think either way would have worked in this scenario. I think the modern looks good though. Regardless, the visuals and the moods created by the costume and the lighting together are incredible. Okay. Moral of the story, take some bright colored neon lit selfies and thank me later. The last movie is Valley of the Dolls. It's on Amazon Prime Video. And in IMDb, the only costume credit, it says gowns by Trivia. And Trivia is famous for having costume Marilyn Monroe in several movies, including that famous dress she wore that flipped up when she stood over the ventilation grate in The Seven Year Itch. Okay. And uh, he also costumed the Thornbirds and Dallas. And yes, you should go watch all those things I just listed for their costumes too. This movie is about three friends and their ups and downs in the entertainment industry. Okay, listen. This is not a feel-good movie. <laughs> a lot happens. There are soaring highs and really ugly lows. It's a high drama movie with some of that extraness that is movies of the 60s. Okay? I'm going to warn you, they do use some derogatory terms that was common in the 60s. Okay? So it's not the happiest movie, but it is a gorgeous movie filled with pretty people and absolutely gorgeous clothes. Moral of the story, when in doubt, tease your hair even higher. And that's my roundup. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know which of these you're dying to watch and leave me your request for the next movie roundup in the comments section below. Share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, check out the description box for links to related videos and links to my shenanigans, and I'll see you in the next video.